Hello there. Welcome to the, the learning of engineering tutorial video lectures. In this video lecture, we are trying to learn what is the principal stresses, what is the principal plane, and if a member is going to be subjected to the, the direct stresses in one plane. So these are the parameters we are going to be seeing. The, before getting into this one, the, what is the principal plane, what is the principal stresses I, I would like to explain. The principal plane is nothing but the planes which carries a zero shear stresses. Right? Suppose this we can take this is the object, the three dimensional objects I have taken. The, can you see this is the combination of the different planes. Can you see this I am going to be taking the 1, 2, 3, 4 and this is going to be the one plane or we can say that is the area and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Can you see 2, 3, 5 and 6 is the another plane. If I am going to be made to section at this, at this point, so then what happened it will become the two faces. That means the two halves it will become and it will generate the new surface. That is the beauty of the solid objects whenever you slice and it will create the new surface and that surface I am going to be taking as a, a plane. So then what will happen here that I am going to be say that is the word is the principal, the principal plane. The plane carries zero shear stresses but only it will carry the normal stresses. So then if I am going to be suppose you can take it 2, 3, 6 and 5 this is the phase where the loads are going to be acting in this direction that is the sigma x. So then I can say this is going to be the principal plane. But if I am going to be taking here so for the example I am going to be considering here another plane here. So that is going to be inclined to the, the cross section of this member. So then what happened can you see this is going to be the section which is going to be inside that means suppose you can take, take a potato and cut normally to the section so then the normal surfaces are going to be creating but if you cut in oblique plane that is going to be inclined to that that's going to be inclined to the horizontal plane so then that kind of planes are going to be carrying the the different types of the stresses so in that cases what will happen maybe this surface 1 2 3 6 and 5 is facing the normal stresses but if i am going to be taking the here is the 6, 7, 8, suppose seven, 3, 6, 7 and 8 plane is going to be carrying the inclined plane and whatever the loads are coming to here is the normal stresses will become that is going to be inclined to that plane. So then that case is what will happen. So then that is not going to be your principal plane. Then what is the principal stresses? The principal stresses are nothing but they are going to be consist of only the normal stresses. Right, so the planes carrying the stresses, then we can say that's going to be your principal stresses. So in this in this uh, derivation, we are trying to find out then what is the principal stresses, what is the principal strain, right? So here the diagram I have considered A, B, C, D is the one object that is in the two-dimensional object, and the loads are acting in the x direction. That's going to be sigma x, and sigma x is going to be calling your the stresses are acting on that member. Now if I am going to be considering the thickness of this member is going to be unit. So then can you see the BC is the phase is going to be subjected to the sh some kind of the loads and here also AD also subjected to the, the stresses are going to be acting. So now I want to find out the cross sectional area. If I am going to be taking the three dimensional object that phase is going to be visible to you like this. Can you see over here? So this is going to be the phase is going to be existed. This is going to be the B and the C. So then here the loads are going to be coming over there. So now what I am going to do, I am looking at this and this thickness is going to be considering the unit. So on that basis, I am going to be writing over here, the cross sectional area, the area of the normal surface, that is going to be area of the normal surface of the BC, I am going to be calling over here, that is equal to the BC is going to be the height of this object and the unit thickness I am going to be considering. This is going to be the area of your cross sectional member is going to be BC into unit thickness. So now what I am going to do, I am going to be considering here, see I'm, I want to determine what is the Px, can you see, what is the Px is the load acting in the same direction. These are the stresses are subjecting but now I want to find out the Px. So how could you find out the Px for this case? So we know the sigma x is nothing but the stress is equal to the load by area we are going to be considering. So this the same equation I am writing the Px by Bc. Then finally, the Px is equal to sigma x into Bc I can write. So can you see here, the load is acting in the x direction, then Px is equal to sigma x into Bc, right? So that I am going to be taking here is the Px is equal to sigma x into Bc. 
So now what I am going to do? Now this is the plane normal but now I want to consider some inclination plane that is going to be oblique cube plane I am going to be considering. Can you see? This is going to be your oblique cube plane because this plane is going to be inclined to the BC that I am going to be say this is going to be your F and this is going to be your E. So can you see E, F and B, C are parallel to each other and F, C is going to be inclined and with the cross section area it is going to be making an angle theta. So now I want to find out the further parameters over here. So there we can see. Suppose this is going to be the line B, C. This is the sigma X is going to be acting or the P, X is going to be acting. Then what happened? I have taken some inclined plane over there which is making an angle theta. When I am going to be extending this one, the line is going to be passing. It means that there is an inclination is existed between your FC plane and your applied load. So now what I am going to do, I am going to be resolving this force into two components. One is normally to the FC and one is going to be parallel to the FC. So now this is going to be your the force Px is there. Now I am going to be this is going to be your C and it is making an angle theta. So then I am going to be resolving into the force one is normally to this one and one is going to be parallel to this part. So this I am going to be say the Pn I am going to be calling and this is going to be your Pt. The normal load is going to be indicating is the Pn and tangential force is going to be indicating the Pt. So then what I am going to do and I am going to be taking here is also the theta. Now I am writing the normal force is equal to the Px into cos theta. And similarly, the Pt is nothing but your tangential force, the Px into the sine theta, right? By this one, they are going to be originating at this point. So now I got the Pn and the Pt. So now the Px value is nothing but the sigma x into Bc. That values I am going to be substituting over here. So the Pn is equal to, what is that one? The Pn is equal to, this is going to be sigma x Bc cos theta, I got it. Similarly, the Pt is equal to sigma x Bc sin theta, I got it. Now we, we have identified the loads are acting on this inclined plane. Now I want to find out the, the principal stresses. So that means the sigma n values we have to be calculate. How could you calculate here? That's the sigma n is the normal stresses which are acting on this plane. So that is going to be P n by cross sectional area of the Fc I am going to be considering here. Right, so that is equal to, so Pn is nothing but your sigma x bc cos theta, sigma x bc cos theta divided by the area I am going to be taking Fc into that plane we are going to be taking, that is thickness is the unit. So that I am going to be taking Fc into 1 I can consider it. So then finally sigma n is equal to sigma x bc by Fc. Can you see this is the bc by Fc. So if I am going to be considering the cos theta, so then what happened this Bc by adjacent side by hypotenuse. So that I am going to be getting here is the cos square theta. That is the sigma n is equal to cos square theta. So now I want to find out the sigma t. Now the stress is parallel to the Fc that I am going to be writing the tau is equal to that is the Pt by the cross sectional area of the Fc I am going to be considering. We know the Pt is nothing but that's going to be sigma x bc sin theta I got it divided by fc I am going to be considering. So from this equation I am going to be writing sigma x cos theta sin theta I got it. Can you see this is going to be your the shear stress that we got it and further simplification of this equation. So here further simplification the tau is equal to sigma x is equal to here that I am going to be writing here the sine uh, 2 theta by 2 we will get it. Further simplification I am writing tau is equal to sigma x by 2 sine 2 theta. So this is the values we got it. That means this Fc plane is going to be carrying the, the two types of forces. That's one is going to be your normal force, normal component and this is going to be your tangential component. These two are going to be. But the BC plane is only carrying the normal stresses. But when it comes to FC, it is carrying the, the two types of forces. One is the normal, second one is the tangential forces. Now we need to find out what is the maximum value of the sigma n. And what is the maximum value of your the shear stresses acting on your face. So now we have 
the sigma n and as well as the shear stress are acting on your face fc so now i am going to be taking here when this is going to be the maximum when this parameter is equal to 1 so that's going to be cos square theta equal to 1 so then when the when the cos theta cos theta is equal to 1 that's going to be when theta is equal to 0 so then what happened your sigma n is going to be sigma x so it means that this is going to be your bc phase right and this is going to be your the d phase as well as the a so initially it is making an angle theta now when the theta is equal to 0 so then what will happen this is going to be the component of your fc will become the bc or it will become the ef then finally the normal stresses are going to be coming directly sigma x is in itself going to be your normal stresses now when it comes to and how to find out your the shear stress so in this case the sigma x by 2 sine 2 theta is there when the sine 2 theta is going to be 1 then only I can say that's going to be your the maximum shear stress so that I am taking sine 2 theta is equal to 1 now you tell me at what case the sine theta is equal to 1 at 90 degrees so right then 2 theta is equal to 90 degrees or 270 degrees whatever it may be then theta is equal to 45 degrees comma 135 degrees so these conditions then what will happen this sine theta will going to be sine 2 theta will become 1 so then the tau is equal to sigma x by 2 so can you see when the component want to fail due to the direct stresses that is equal to be normal stress must be equal to the that stresses in the x direction but in this case what will happen the component will fail half of your direct stresses so that's why the shear stresses are more dangerous than your normal stresses and then we can calculate your theta is equal to 45 or 135 degrees then this will going to be the magnitude is going to be the one so then we will going to be getting this components so then this way we are going to be finding suppose if i am going to be locating this part this 45 degrees of the line suppose this is going to be your b and the c this theta must be 45 degrees right but in any point of this bc line you can take it this is going to be your 135 degrees all right this line also you can take from point b to see any point on that bc then it will create your the maximum shear stress are going to be calculating so i hope you are able to understand how to calculate the the principal stresses from here the first we have taken the two dimensional objects the direct stresses which are acting normally to the face of the bc then we made it the incline to that surface and then we have resolved the forces into x into normally to the inclined plane and parallel to the inclined plane normal to the inclined plane is called your normal stresses and which is parallel to that face fc is going to be calling your the tangential stresses so then we substituted in that equation the finally we got this equation sigma n is equal to sigma x into cos square theta sigma x by 2 is equal to sin 2 theta then now we have find out what is the maximum that plane can carry so then when theta is equal to 0 then cos square theta will become 1 so on this basis sigma n is equal to sigma x and similarly the tau is equal to sigma x by 2 this parameter will going to be the one that is going to be either 30 degree that is 90 degrees to 70 degrees like that it will go so then the theta is equal to 45 degrees and 135 degrees like that you can add the 90 90 degrees so that you will get the maximum shear stress acting on your face bc so still if you feel any difficulty or confusion please put in the comment section so that i can reach you out thank you